Well, today is the day we are going to try and get paint on the back of the Thunderbird. Well, all the way up to the front of the doors, in fact. We're going to try and do the whole thing today. Now, unfortunately, it is looking a little bit like rain is coming once again overnight tonight. So we have to get this done, at least one coat on, and dry before that happens. We've got about six hours thereabouts to get all of this sorted and then we can put the cover back over it and we should be fine so i went out to paint shop products the other day and got a liter and a half of sapphire blue which is what this color is well not this color because it's white but what this color is i've got my thinners and they reliably inform me i need about a 60 40 split on this so we should get nearly three liters out of this tin once it's all mixed together so the first thing we're going to do pry this open get it mixed up get it in the gun and get everything ready to go Well, we've managed to get one coat of blue paint all over the car and then we've managed to rub through a few spots because there are some bits that are really, really rough. The roof's looking all right now. It's really nice and smooth, but that's mostly because I've taken this piece of 240 Abronet on a um, sponge pad, on a soft backed pad, gone over the whole thing and then gone over that again with 400 grit wet and dry. So this stuff all around the side, is really nice. This stuff on the back isn't bad. I haven't done all of the trunk lid yet because you can notice really badly just by listening and being around it how how bad the paint's gone down on this particular section we were having some trouble with the gun with the, the spray gun as we were going through we think that was down to the air compressor just not holding enough air and not being able to keep up with how much we were trying to put down in one go so smaller batches of paint needed in smaller areas rather than trying to do the whole thing it just can't keep up but at this point we are a lot more targeted in where we're trying to put more paint down so it's not as bad as it was but if you listen to this over this section I've I've kind of gone over here already with a little bit of 400 but doesn't sound too bad a little bit closer into the center where I've only done the 240 and then in the center where I've done nothing it's extremely rough and like it, if you slide your hand over you get onto the center section and you just stop and again you can hear with the um, with the Abronet and everything else when it changes. Over here, not too bad, not too bad. Really, really terrible in the center. And the thing is, it doesn't take much pressure to just knock the tops off. This section is actually reasonably smooth now compared to this bit that I haven't touched at all. So the next job after that is some 400 grit wet and dry and just take that back again. And once you get to that point, it's really nice and smooth. Obviously, it still feels a little gritty because there's paint that's come off in the water. It really needs a proper wipe down as well. But when you come over into the, ooh, lost a bit, onto the center section that I was just going over, it's suddenly really, really nice and smooth, which you would expect. That is the process and that is the goal that we're trying to achieve. So I need to finish off the back of this and then all being well, we can get another coat on this tonight. So finally, after a week of working to try and keep this thing clean, which is basically impossible because as soon as you clean one panel, some tree launches some little spore and it lands back on it again whilst you're cleaning the next one. It is blue. It is blue everywhere, except for a couple of very, very small areas where I might have sanded through just a tiny bit where the paint was very, very thin. I used a litre and a half of paint on this by and large about 60-40 split as advised and I still probably think I went a little bit too thin um, and it was it's fine but it definitely really wants another 
one to two coats of paint before the lacquer went on. We put a very thin coat of lacquer on this just to try and protect it some and it is noticeable that the lacquer on this back half is slightly less shiny on the front. The colour match between the two is absolutely fantastic. We got all the paint from Paint Shop Products um, but the lacquer itself could do with being a little bit thicker just to give it a bit more of a sheen. This is almost feeling a little bit more satin despite it being exactly the same lacquer as we used on the front. So there is small differences but crucially it's blue it's not rusty anymore compared to how this was a couple of months ago before we started redoing all of the bodywork on the uh, panel and the quarter panels at the back this looks like a completely different car okay maybe not a completely different car a very similarly badly restored car that's been done on a driveway but nevertheless I'm extremely happy with what we've managed to do on a driveway in the middle of summer surrounded by pollen and bits of tree and birds that have already christened the paint job on the top here. I'm going to have to give this a wash already despite it only being a few hours since I put the lacquer on. Um, but that's what you get when you try to work on a driveway with no cover. I could have put a gazebo underneath it but wherever I put the gazebo they would have just hit somewhere else so it was kind of a futile effort for the challenge of working around it. But now for the really exciting bit and that is peeling all of this tape off the windows and actually getting back some of the nice chrome looking bits to really accent this uh, this paint. And then next time we're going to move on to doing other important things like making it run and drive, hopefully making it run and drive, putting some wheels on it because the tyres that are on this are shot. So we've got some new 15 inch tyres to put on uh, and get everything sorted there and yeah it's um I'm really pleased. I'm just I'm kind of astounded that I've actually managed to get to this point on the driveway and obviously I've had a lot of help from Ignition Motorsports with Colin down there when we were doing the front clip. Uh, guys at PSP have also been helping us obviously with bits of advice and, uh, and paint and yeah all, all of the people who helped us get to this point sanding it over the years as well when we were doing the front. Thank you so much but now I'm going to do the really really fun bit. Hopefully you're going to watch along with. So one problem we've been having with trying to get all of this tape off and get to the nice satisfying shot of seeing it all done is where the tape is kind of delaminating and leaving behind a layer of white paint behind it as though that's absorbed it really well into the tape and I didn't think painters tape would do that. This is pretty standard stuff for doing bodywork so I'm not entirely sure what we've done differently than you normally would other than being outside so whether or not it's a moisture content problem I have absolutely no idea, but it is definitely eating into how much time we have before it gets properly dark out here to actually get a nice shot of this with all of the tape taken off and see our lovely windows that really, really badly need a clean and very small bits of chrome that unfortunately got hit with a little bit of white paint quite effectively. So we need to redo those. On the upper side, all of these seals need to come out anyway because I have new seals for these quarter windows and the, the side windows all the way along so I'm not too broken up about that. I just want to get all of this tape off so I can see what it looks like. The other downside is that now the paint, now the body looks better, some of the chrome underneath here looks really really bad. This stuff's still really nice going up around the window but this piece that's all kind of pockmarked really does look a bit terrible. Finally, after what, three or four years of working on this and trying to get it to a running and driving state, we finished the paint, which was never part of the goal that we started out with. We were going to do a quick brake setup on this and then get it running and driving. And instead, we ended up taking lots and lots of panels off and we did a whole paint resto. And I think restoration is probably a bit of a generous word for this. It's definitely a make do and mend kind of paint restoration rather than a really good paint restoration. And unfortunately it shows. It's a really nice looking paint job. I'm thrilled with how it looks. I'm not going to underestimate that. That is exactly what I wanted. A blue car that was no longer rusting into the ground. 
However, having got that far, I can now see all of the bits that I missed, where the paint is a little bit thin, the lacquer's a little bit thin, the prep wasn't good enough, which predominantly is this panel, which was the last one that I did, and I rushed it because I was already taking the wings and the headlight buckets down to get done at ignition. And I eventually found that this actually unbolted, took it off, did a very quick prep job on it, and it really shows. I didn't treat all of the rust well enough. There are a couple of little spots that are coming up just here and just on this corner and that is going to bug me so I'm going to have to take this off and redo this panel at some point and if I do I'll probably put a little bit more paint on it as well but that is almost certainly going to be a next year project at this point because for now I just want it to get through winter without having to worry about it rusting into the ground and realistically it shouldn't at this point I can put the seals in the windows I can start doing more bits onto the boot because there's some big holes in the inner trunk lip uh, which really need some work but the patch panels for those are so expensive they cost something like six hundred dollars so i think i'm going to have to try and make something up myself at least at the outset to try and fix it before i give up and just spend the money so it'll be a nice learning job to work out how i can make very intricate pieces of trim i'm probably going to end up watching a lot of youtube tutorials in the meantime and after all that work, we didn't manage to get it to the car show. We wanted to take this to a Berkshire Motor Show, which isn't far from us, so that we could get people to see it again. It hasn't been there for a few years. It looked terrible. It was basically in its as arrived condition last time it went, and we just couldn't get it there. The trailer we had was only 14 feet long. It was a last minute replacement for one that fell through, so we could only take the kit car. But we did manage to get this to West Berkshire Classic Vehicle Club's Newbury car show. It was their 30th anniversary and the first one at Newbury Showground. And it looked so good in the field, even with all the little paint defects that I knew were there got loads of nice comments and there was a few people who'd been at the Berkshire Motor Show beforehand and remembered it from when it looked really really bad. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because next time we're working on the Thunderbird we will hopefully be getting this thing started. We've got to go through the fluids, make sure they're fine, top them all up. We've got to fit a starter motor relay and a few other bits and pieces and just make sure it doesn't short itself into the ground then we can try and crank it over. And After that see if it drives. Make sure you also follow us on all of the usual social media platforms. Check out shop.pedalbox.show for our new merch t-shirts as well. You can also support us on patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.